You ready? I think so. Uh, welcome to the uh, February 1st Inland Wetlands Water Course Commission meeting. Um, first, uh, if there's anybody that's, oh, Mr. Chairman, I should mention one thing. Um, now that Mr. Izzo has resigned, um, our newest member, Mr. Russo, can be seated as an alternate. You don't make a second. It's very good. Thank you. Um, if there's any, yes, Lisa? Biella and Jackson are on. Yes. Yep. Bill, are you there? I am. Steve, are you there? He's on mute, but he's. Okay. Well, anyway, um, if there's anybody uh, who'd like to say anything about it, it's not on the agenda tonight. Um, you're welcome to right now. If not, um, like the approval of the minutes of the meeting for uh, January. If anybody's read it, there's any corrections, deletions, additions, speak up. Otherwise, I need a motion to approve. Commissioner uh, Rogan will make the motion to approve the minutes. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, and now the regular meeting. Uh, First is application 22-01WF, proposal by Stan Khan, Stan, Stan uh, LLC, to perform environmental remediation activities within both an upland review area and a flood hazard zone on lot 10, block 133 at 405 Brown Street. That would be Carolyn Edwards. I hope she unmutes herself and... Yeah, hi, I'm here. Good. You're on tap. You're okay, up. good. Um, so did you guys see the presentation that I made already? Or should I go ahead and I don't know how to share it with my screen. Try to share it. Let's see. Carolyn, they do have it in front of you. Yeah. The yeah. Site oh, you have it. Okay. So if they'd like to if you'd like to walk them through it by all means. Okay, I'll just go through it real quick. It's 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 pretty it's pretty easy. Um, first of all, my name is Carolyn Edwards. I work for Environalytics Group. I'm an engineer. Um, I'm representing the site owner for the Sam Kim property. And we submitted an application, of course, you know that. And I'm just gonna give you a quick overview of what the application said. Um, it was just a proposal to conduct excavation, transportation, and disposal of an area within 50 feet of the Matabasset River. Uh, it's about 2,500 square feet to a depth of of five feet, um, 475 cubic yards. And the purpose is to keep the contamination from going to the Mad Bassett River and to comply with, you know, Connecticut deep laws. Um, let's see. If you go to the next slide is map, wetlands map review. You guys have to see that. Yep. Okay. Um, I just did a quick map review before I submitted the application, and um, our small area of excavation is not within an area of wetland soils. And I did confirm with the town in their email that um, we didn't need any more wetland delineation or a drainage and report analysis. Um, so he said, go ahead and submit the application as it is. So on the next slide, I'm going to give you just a quick overview of what we're doing. This is really easy. Um, prior to the excavation, we will be put, putting up a silt fence along the river so that um, we won't get any stormwater runoff or any kind of silt drainage or any kind of drainage into the river from what we're removing. We will excavate the contaminated soil and it will be live, live loaded into dump trucks so that it doesn't have to be stockpiled and it will be taken off site for disposal. The excavation will be backfilled to grade with clean gravel and then once that's done there's nothing else to be done at this property it'll be it'll be uh, it'll be remediated to within Connecticut deep standards so that is basically it it's pretty easy just a small excavation it's just super close to the river how did you establish the boundaries for the contamination out of curiosity so we did a bunch of soil testing and it's just based on soil boring analytical results. How close to the edge of the river did it get? Um, I'd say, I'm not exactly sure, but I'd say it's probably within 30 feet. Yeah. 
Okay, thank you. And Carolyn, the, the soils themselves, the majority are, are clay um, type soils in that area? Um, in that area, it's mostly sandy clay. Yeah. And Lots of fill material, it's industrial mm -hmm. site. What, what are your plans for starting this? Oh, well, that depends on when we get approval from the city zoning board as well as this. And then we are still waiting on one more approval from the state. And then probably by spring, we'll, we'll be into it. And Carolyn, what precipitated the, uh, the uh, discovery of the contaminated soils? Well, this has been an ongoing investigation for years. And um, I recently have taken over, so I don't really know what the original site investigation included, but I'm sure it was some kind of soil investigation over the entire site. And it just happened to pinpoint on this area next to the river as being a little bit higher contamination that needs to be taken care of. If I recall the property transferred several years ago. Correct. And, and does your excavation area include a buffer or do you do soil testing after you've excavated what you believe is all the contaminated material? How does that work? Yeah, so when, when they get done with the excavation, they'll take soil samples from the floor and the walls of the excavation to make sure they got it all. And if you have to do more, then you have to come back to us? Is that how that would work? Correct. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure how that works with you guys, but we generally would probably just keep going until we got it all, unless it was turned into some super huge excavation, and then we would have to come back for more approvals. We did, you don't want to hold. You don't want to hold up the, you know, the process of this. I think if you know if that was the, uh, the situation where, let's say, you extended the excavation another 10 or 15, 20 feet. I think as long as you advise staff of the location, and we had an as-built plan of, of the area uh, depicting where the material was excavated, that would be fine. Sure, okay. Uh, the, the area is pretty well defined with the soil borings that we did. So I don't really expect that to be a problem. How far are you from the fish ladder that... Uh... Gosh, I can't tell by this map, but I mean, Probably a That's football good. field. Okay. And just for the commission's benefit, uh, there was a fish ladder installed um, at that site probably 15 years or so ago. And the ladder was installed as part of a remediation project for off-site off um, work that was um, performed by a, a separate contractor. And they, they work with deep to pick that site and construct the ladder as a part of the remediation. So it was very creative. Right. Uh, this is Bill Jackson. I have a few questions about the backfill material. Sure. Is the is the backfill material compatible with the in texture and uh, is it compatible with the material that's being removed? No, it will probably just be clean gravel, like one inch clean gravel. One inch gravel. Yeah. And uh, are you main? Are you putting some kind of vegetative cover over it, or planning Which, to have uh, it vegetated? And not currently. Um, and at the end, when we do final site restoration, yeah, that might actually occur. Okay. But we're not to that okay. point yet. It's not necessary, except for aesthetics. Okay, so it's a. Uh, you say you're backfilling with a one inch uh, crushed stone or gravel? Yeah, clean gravel. Okay, so um, is it? Are there plans to maintain the um, sedimentation and erosion controls for a period of time post uh, remediation? Um, no, it's really not necessary. So once everything goes out, it'll be back to the way it was, except that'll be gravel instead of soil. There shouldn't be any more sedimentation or sediment migration or any kind of anything else going on. So it's a level site? Right. Thank you. 
Anybody else have any other questions or comments? For if not, oh, we have to wait 30 days. Uh, yeah, Mr. Chairman, because of the statutory requirements, the, the board cannot take action. So. You need a motion to, to table any, any action. Right, we need, need a motion to table until next meeting. Okay. If that's the case, I need a motion to table. Yeah, Commissioner Rogan will make a motion to table application 22 01 WF for the next meeting. March. March. March 1st. Is it March 1st again? Commissioner Pavano will second. Uh, all in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed? If not, we'll see you next month. Hey, right, thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate your consideration. Uh, next is application 22-02W, proposal by Little House Living LLC to construct residential dwelling units and discharge drainage within Upland Review Area on Lot 10, Block 114 at 1676 Berlin Turnpike. Mr. Chairman, I, uh, you'll see an email that I received or placed in front of everyone this evening from Attorney Sullivan um, representing uh, Pat Snow on this project, Little House Living LLC, uh, recognizing the fact that there has been some public interest uh, generated in regards to the proposal. Um, the applicant along with staff are recommending that a public hearing be scheduled uh, for the next meeting. And a full-fledged presentation will be made at that time. So, at this point in time, the the commission um, I'm looking for the commission to schedule a hearing at the, the next meeting, which will be March. In that case, uh, I need a motion to hold a public hearing for application 22-02W. Okay. Motion. Public hearing for 22-02W. Can I second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Uh, other business to come before the commission. Application 19-04F, AIM Partners LLC, request a permit modification. Mr. Chairman, if I can just give you a little uh, info uh, in regards to why the application is here this evening. I'm sure the commission will recall that um, AIM Partners was granted an approval yes. two years ago. Um, that was yes. Probably yeah, about two years ago. A little over. Yep. Yeah. To uh, construct two um, retail uh, medical style uh, buildings at the intersection of Farmington Avenue and Lower Lane. Um, the commission approved um, the application at that point, and it was merely listed as a uh, flood hazard permit uh, because of the location yes. of the site. There were no wetlands involved with this one. Um, since then, obviously, everyone's aware that the first structure has been built. Um, the applicant is looking to uh, construct the second building, and there have been some minor modifications to the footprint um, of what's being proposed as we speak, which necessitates a, a modification to the permit, essentially because we cite the, the exact plan um, that's approved by this board, yeah. so there are changes. With that, let's turn it over. So good evening for the record. My name is Jim Cassidy, a professional engineer and principal with the firm of Halsey Pearson and Cassidy. Um, here tonight representing AIM Partners LLC, who is the owner of the piece of property located at the corner of Lower Lake and Farmington Avenue. I guess the first question I ask is because you have some, some people on video is where do I set up an easel so everybody can see it? Want me to go to the back? Okay, and am I okay without a mic? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're gonna be able to pick me up there? Yep. We should. I'll try to speak louder. Not like they can see it no, anyway. Yeah. Too far out. <laughs> can't see. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty far out. Yeah. Come in. Yeah. I will. If you wanted them to see it, you'd have to hold it right in front of that lens right I think there. I might sit right here. I don't think, you know, they're trying to work. Sorry. Yeah, we saw your front. Yeah. Okay. Um, so again, for the record, my name is Jim Cassidy with the engineering firm at LLC Pearson Cassidy here tonight representing AIM Partners. Um, Steve Francisco and um, Marcus Bacon uh, from AIM Partners is here with me this evening. 
as uh, Mr. Horbel had mentioned, um, we were before you in 2019, at which time we received the permit um, for the development of two pieces or two buildings on this piece of property at the corner of Lower Lane and Farmington Avenue. Uh, the approval at that point um, was for an activity in the floodplain. Uh, the entire property is within the floodplain. A uh, hundred-year flood elevation out here is 45. Uh, the majority of the site is down about elevation 42, 41. <clears throat> so it's about three to four feet down below the floodplain. At that time, we received approval uh, for the development of two buildings, uh, one being 3,270 3, 3, square feet uh, as a medical office use, and the second one um, was 3,230 square feet, which was actually a retail office use. The 3,270 square foot building medical office is constructed. That's the building that you see out there today. Uh, it is uh, the uh, home of, um, of Marcus's and Steve's um, chiropractic business or physical therapy business, I'm sorry. Uh, and we've successfully finished that portion of the site, uh, the parking, uh, the associated drainage and all, and all that. Uh, in the meantime, uh, they've been looking for a tenant um, for the other building, uh, again, which was approved as a retail office type use uh, and had a footprint of 3,270 square feet. Uh, at this point, they have a company, um, the local dentist company, Matula's Family Dentistry, who is actually looking at moving to this building. Uh, in working with them and finalizing the footprint of the building, uh, what we found is the footprint had to slightly grow. It's gone from 3,270 square feet to a total of 3,400 square feet. Um, the plan I had before you, and I'm just going to twist it around real quick so everybody can see it, uh, what I've done uh, is the site plan that you have submitted shows the proposed building highlighted in brown. The new, the previously approved footprint uh, is shown in red on this plan. Um, so you can see this, the configuration has slightly changed, um, but overall, if you actually look at the brown area, it is about 170 square feet large. Uh, the first floor elevation of that building uh, was originally imposed at 45.5, so a half foot above the 100 year flood elevation uh, is still at the same elevation. All the proposed mechanicals uh, will also be at that same elevation, above one your flood elevation um, as originally proposed. Uh, the difference is uh, with this modification of additional 170 square feet, uh, what it equates to is, excuse me, put the page here. If I take 170 square feet over the average depth of the floodplain, it worked out to about 12 cubic yards of reduction for the flood storage capacity. What we did uh, on the final plans you're set. Uh, we did our, we did our um, cut and fill computations within the floodplain. Uh, we had to make some modifications to the grading along the, the easterly side of the building, so along the fire and avenue side of the building. We slightly lowered the grade in that area. Uh, then also you'll also notice on the plan um, that the, I call it the, the center portion where the ramps are and the stairs actually got pulled back. So that's all lower area. So with those modifications, um, what we find is we, we still do not have any increase or decrease in flood storage capacity. Um, the additional material going into the building is reduced by grading on the side and also that pullback up in front. Uh, and we can achieve uh, what we originally proposed. Um, so with this revised application, uh, we have no reduction in flood storage capacity as originally proposed. Uh, at this point, we would like to move forward, complete the construction of the building, complete construction of the remaining parking lot, and then the associated drainage with that also uh, will be completed. Um, there are no other impacts. It's relatively a minor uh, modification to what's originally approved. I uh, hope the commission feels so. Also, uh, with that, I'll be brief, and I'll be able to answer any questions you may have. Did you say 12 cubic yards? Is that, am I, that's, yeah, so the that's what we're talking about? Couldn't, well, because 170 square feet times the average depth was about yeah. two and a half feet, worked out about 12 cubic yards. Okay. We had to do some regrading to reduce that, compensate for that. Compensate, yep. Yeah. So there's still, there's no net loss to flood storage capacity. Jim, you don't see anything. No, it's it's pretty right. straightforward, as I had mentioned earlier. It's just, just required as a result of the change and so we can take like action because this is already approved. Yes, it's a, it's a modification and take, take action. action. I would need I would need a motion to just to approve the modification to the building. I'll make a motion roll. Uh, did, for, did anybody have any questions for either either the engineer or the owners? If not, go ahead. Commissioner Roe will make a modification for that application. Yes, that's right. Now, second. 
Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Good luck, gentlemen. The first building is great, so let's keep it up there. Right? All right, the next uh, for discussion um, is 711 Sullington Road complaint. Um, yeah, Mr. Chairman, if I can start off, um, I think as a result of um, the concerns that were expressed by one of the budding property owners several months ago, and then some correspondence from um, his legal counsel, um, we contacted the property owner once again, forwarded the, the written concerns to them. Um, I've had several conversations with them. Um, they are willing, and they are on this evening, so I'm sure they, they would like to speak. They are willing to do whatever it takes to, uh, to rectify the situation. Um, at this point, they initially they didn't feel that they had violated anything um, in terms of our regulation. We've had several discussions, um, and I've recommended that they contact the uh, Connecticut River Coastal Conservation District for assistance and providing a planting schedule for them. That's a service uh, that the, uh, the district provides for free uh, to property owners within um, their, their district area. Um, they're willing to do that. Um, they're just getting started with it. And um, I think they're here this evening. They also submitted some correspondence um, couple of pages, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, voicing um, their thoughts and uh, what they would like to do uh, to put everything to rest. So if they would like to speak, by all means, they, they are tuning in this evening. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Bill. Uh, this is Bill Jackson. I'm recusing myself from this discussion and I'm going to be um, adjourning myself from the meeting. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. I don't know how to pronounce your last names. Um, would you like to speak to the commission at all? Are they? Are they You're on mute, folks. If you'd like, there you go. Uh, yes, good afternoon. Uh, good evening. Uh, Yes, so we are the uh, the owners of the property of 7-Eleven that we have purchased. If you could speak uh, up just a bit, we're having trouble hearing you. Oh, okay. One second. Hear me better? Yes. Okay. So, like I said, we are a property owner of 7-Eleven Southington Road. Um, we have, and you know, you probably had uh, read already the letter that I have addressed to the commission. Uh, and like I explained, uh, we have purchased the property back in November 2020. We had a house fire in February 2021. And since then, we are not um, living on this property. However, we are trying to rebuild our house so we can move back. Um, in uh, spring and summer of 2021, we had completed some outside work and that work was done mostly in the upland area, uh, partially in the upland review area. However, no cleaning and no activity was done in the wetland area. And I think uh, Mr. Denzer uh, from Wetland and Environmental Consulting had noticed the same thing. Uh, and uh, what we had done, we, get, we cut the, uh, some leaves, some foliage, some small scraps. Everything was cut or like trim or mold. Nothing was removed uh, with, with roots, so everything can grow back. Um, there was no any activity that was invasive. We have not added or removed any soil. Uh, we have not done any grinding, any constructions in that area. Uh, our intent was to uh, pick some grass over that area in the future. Um, and uh, like I, I said before, like there was no soil either deposit or removed from that area. So we do not believe that any of that will be falling under significant impact. Um, we have planted some uh, arbitrary trees uh, parallel to the wetland. Um, we have cut some trees in the back of the house in preparation to build the garage and 
some uh, uh, sheep uh, three branches uh, are in the area of like upland review area or the upland, and we are planning to remove it and use it as a, as a mulch for our backyard. So it's not something that is going to stay. The same thing with the big stump of a tree that was uh, removed by one of our contractors. But uh, at the end of the day, we are trying to do the best for the environment. We are trying to do the best to protect the wetland. And we don't feel that any of our activities had a negative impact uh, of to the wetland, any harm to the environment. And we just want to maintain that we have, we don't feel that we have done anything wrong. Um, I, I mean, I, I guess that what you're saying is you're going to try to improve the what was already there. Um, you're going to try to get it back to what was before. Um, are you going to seek uh, the the help that Jim Harbel requested or uh, said that you could you could use that uh, the coastal soil conservation? Soil conservation. Yeah. So I have contacted the conservation district. I have talked to them. Uh, I believe as the property owner, we have a uh, right to enjoy and maintain that area. So uh, our, uh, you know, we may work with conservation districts and uh, go with their recommendation of what the best native planting are for that area to make sure that the area is protected. And, um, and you know, if there, they have mentioned, I have talked to Kelly Starr, she has mentioned that they have sales in springtime. Uh, we have uh, did a lookup on, on uh, native plants that are good for the wetlands or for the upland review area. And if that will be the decision of the commission that this is something that we should and need to do, we absolutely want to address that. Uh, if you feel that uh, feeding the grass will be enough, then we will go with that. And again, like no roots were removed. So all that, um, all those um, weeds and foliage and small shrubs will be growing back. So they will show up again in springtime and they will be growing back during summer. It's not like anything was removed with roots. Um, I mean, that, that, that's great. And if, if, if they're going to come on, they're going to give you anything in writing. We'd like to see that just so we can go over uh, what, what they're looking to have you do. Um, and I guess we'll have to wait to see what they say before, you know, before any action is taken. And, and I can certainly work. Uh, yeah. I can contact uh, the Soil Conservation Service and try to help put things together yeah. to, uh, to be able to put the uh, situation to rest. Right. Yeah. This is something we could action like. Um in April, May, where the growing season yeah, is. Right. Yeah. 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 I don't see anything being done out there until probably May anyway. Yeah. Right? Think so. You know, with plantings and yeah. all. So. But then yeah, that, that, that point will grow quick. I, I was out there. Yeah. It was just all. I didn't see anything. It wouldn't grow back. Right? Yeah. As the property owner mentioned, they didn't remove things. They just cut them. Right. So, um, it's, you know, so, so if you can keep us abreast of what, of what you know, they're telling you and what you're going to do, um, and, you know, and like said, so Jim is willing to work with you. Um, that would be great. We really appreciate that. We definitely want to do whatever is best for the town, for the environment, and it's not our intention to do anything wrong or something that is not permitted. We understand that. We appreciate that very much. So perhaps in the next couple of days, you can give me a call and uh, we can put a game plan together. Perhaps maybe we can have a conference call with the Soil Conservation Service, you know, in the next week or two um, to try to put a, you know, a, a game plan together to uh, to resolve the, uh, the situation. Absolutely. I think like, uh, you know, with the snow on the ground at this point, uh, there would be not much that we can do. But uh, when I spoke with Kelly, she had mentioned that they would be willing to come over if that would be like uh, your recommendation and then, then she can Definitely suggest some planting for us. Okay, thank you. I think that's that's sufficient for now, Jim. I guess I mean I can't do anything anyways yeah. because of the weather. But um, yeah, if you just keep us informed of what's going on, we'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
you have any other correspondence? Um, yeah, one item I just wanted to brief the commission on. Um, I had a request from a Jameson Evans um, recently who is putting together an Eagle Scout project. Mm -hmm. um, and his project, as it's proposed, is to um, install brick pavers or either brick or asphalt pavers around a, uh, a fire pit uh, that presently exists within the um, Hatchery Brook uh, Preserve. For those of you that aren't familiar with it, it's off of Orchard Road. Um, it's the old part of the old Shear property. Uh, Hatchery Brook, there's a community garden there. Yeah. And then it's the field that runs to the uh, to the north, it ties into the Girl Scout property, it ties into Bicentennial Park. There's, a, there's an old um, block building. It's probably, I don't want to say a shed, it's probably 10 by 20 that I think the scouts used for, for camping and, and things of that nature. I think the Shears originally built it. It's adjacent to Hatchery Brook, probably, his proposal was probably within 30 feet of the brook. Um, from the information that he supplied me with, um, I personally, I don't see, you know, from an administrative standpoint, the need to uh, go through the permit process with the board. Um, it's an open area as we speak. Um, it's a grassed area that's maintained. Um, the brick pavers will be constructed at grade. It's not like he's bringing fill in or disturbing anything. So I said, go ahead. I don't see a need for permitting, but just advise me when you get ready to start the project so that you know, we have a heads up. So just want to know alert you to that in case. I know there's been some con controversy about that area recently with you know, bonfires and that type of thing, but yeah. Yeah. Just so you're aware. So we have that item. Then um, one thing that uh, that I should have placed on the agenda that uh, escaped my mind, but it's that time of year for the election of officers. So if the commission's so inclined to add that to the agenda, which you can. It's a regular meeting, so you can add anything to the agenda if you'd like to you know, discuss that this evening. If not, we can certainly put it off to the Mr. Rowe will make a motion to add that to the agenda, tonight's agenda. Have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We make a nomination. Peter Neiman for chairman. Do you accept? I accept. Second? Okay. Any other, any other? Yeah, vice chairman? Yeah, uh, well, we well, do, that, do that after, or? Yeah, we'll yeah, that after. yeah. yeah. Um, is there any other nominations? I don't want to nominate anybody. If not, can I have a? A uh, show of hands of who? Aye. Aye. Yeah, like no opposed? No. And, <laughs> and now, yeah, for Vice Chairman? I would like to make a nomination of Vice Chair for Rick White. Second? Second. Any other nominations? If not, can I have a show of hands to? Aye. Aye. No, we have to, we have to. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> um, very good. And uh, thank you. Um, and ain't nothing else? I have nothing else. Uh, um, and uh, did, did anybody uh, introduce themselves to our new, this is going to be a new member because uh, I don't know if you heard Jim say that our other member who was put on last year, yeah. had, had, a, he had a decline coming because he's moving, moving out of town. Oh, is he really? Mr. Yeah. Russo. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to try to get Mr. Russo on as a full-time member. That's great. Thank you um, for your help. Yeah. Glad to be here. Um, now, I don't know, what, what, did you have to go to the town council? Um, you know, I don't know how that They have to write a letter of intent requesting to be put into. No, we'll, we'll have uh, we'll, we'll see. the manager's um, assistant. There might be a problem with party minority rep, too. Oh, so. No, that could be an issue. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, you're right. no, we'll let's go to the town clerk. Yeah, we'll yeah. The town clerk and CK and Wall. He has to stay as alternate. You know that we need him. We can we're done every one regular yeah, I mean, what's going to be funny is that if, if they can't get on because you're because of your affiliation with the party, come anyways because we're going to be down a member anyways. Right. So, you know, but you asked if you were put on as a full member, but. Um, you're still part of the group. Yes, <laughs> yes. Fortunately or unfortunately. Forward right. to it. Yeah. Uh, other than that, uh, can I have a motion to uh, adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye.
Can those Roman numerals? 736. Uh, 730. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, uh, the computer says 730. Oh, okay. um, it can be painful once in a while to turn <laughs> All right, are we off, Lisa? Have a good night, everybody.